שלום. I mean, I can make some noise for y'all. You, can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Gideon, you good? I think, I think he just went to go do something real quick. Mm-hmm. Everybody on um Discord, can y'all hear and see me okay? Are we good? I hear you loud and clear. Right. Kevin, are you there? Kevin Jzef. I am here. Shabbat Shalom. Good sir. I hear you loud and clear on my end as well. Shabbat Shalom. Hold on one second, y'all. We'll get GD on just a minute to see if you're gonna pop up, and then we'll get started. Hold on one second. Y'all know GD, I'll be taking his before Sabbath class boost. <laughs> I'm a guy, Ortega. Yo. Cool beans, cool beans. And just so you know, Ortega, I'm gonna I'm gonna be sending you a lot of stuff to share today. That's all right. Oh yeah. So I'm going to be working you hard, but it's going to be the Lord's work you're doing. Oh, yeah. I'm honored for the Lord's work for real. Praise God for, for that. For sure. Mm-hmm. Clubhouse is good. Clubhouse has been behaving lately. I'm still going to get, not Clubhouse, but Blog Talk has been behaving lately. I'm still going to get rid of it, though. 
Got to get all my stuff off of it. It's more trouble than it's worth. And it does everything that Clubhouse does. Only difference is it charges money. Clubhouse does it for free. I'm like, why am I paying money for something that I'm only using for a certain way? And I can use that somewhere else for free. So I hope y'all are ready for today's class. Y'all can tell by the title. Y'all finna learn something today. Because boy, 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 Christians do not know what a sign from God even is. We don't got a clue as a collective. We don't have a clue. You know what I'm saying? We just look at, y'all going to learn some words. Y'all going to learn some terms. Y'all going to learn about some solar eclipses. We going to get into it today. You follow what I'm saying? Y'all just, mm -hmm. ooh, we just be on one. And I blame, y'all know what I always do. When you got bad kids, I blame the parents. When you got black, bad students, I blame the teachers. That's what I do. Right? Yeah. And when I say bad students, I ain't talking about behavior. I'm talking about what you know and what you don't know. That's what I do. People ain't doing their job. You follow what I'm saying? Preachers get more passes on the, on the job than anybody I know. Any other job you um, have in life, if you were messing up this bad, as these preachers do, you would have been fired a long time ago. No question. Like, just get off my job. We done with you. We don't need you. But when they come to um, preachers, preachers get straight up paid. They get tithes. They get donations. They get offerings. And y'all walking around out here don't know anything. If you put your child in college, paying literally tens of thousands, some people hundreds of thousands, for education, and they came out of college, as ignorant as they was when they first walked in, as a parent, you'll be upset when you are taken. Yeah. You'll be mad. No, I don't pay all this money kids, for man. your education. Exactly. I don't pay all this money for your education and you just, you ain't learned anything. Right? And yeah. the crazy thing about it is the students who didn't learn anything from the pastors come over here and get mad at the pastor that's actually teaching his students. They get mad at y'all because y'all learning. That's crazy, ain't it? Yep. They should go back and ask for a refund from their pastors. Stop tired and stop giving them donations to them if you're not learning anything. See, I never had a problem with um pastors getting paid. Bible say pastors are supposed to get paid. I have a problem with pastors getting paid who are not doing their jobs. Mm -hmm. That's what I was in a problem with. They getting, they getting free money. You follow what I'm saying? They getting Sorry. free money. They don't make no sense. Right? I'm going to go ahead and um, mute Gideon so when he comes back in on my end, it won't be interrupting it. Hold on one second. Y'all know he might um, be on headphones while he's sitting on something else. You know what I'm saying? So you probably hear everything we're saying. Turn this fan directly off for me. going to be blowing. Okay, Jeff, I believe it's you reading this week or is it Kev who read last week? What's going on? Talk to me. Uh, brother Kev read last week. All right. Are you up for reading this week, my brother? Uh, for sure. For sure. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Okay, we're going to get this thing started then. We're going to get this thing popping. All right. Hmm. Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Absolute Truth. This is the Bible study that focuses on the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth concerning the Word of God, while leaving out all personal opinions, speculations, and beliefs. I'm Brother Joshua, and today reading for me is one of my all-time favorite readers. He is an Absolute Bible Truth University graduate. And I see him as my big brother. He's also an Absolute Bible Truth Ministries Day One-ish member. This is the one, the only, Brother Jeff. Go ahead, bro. All right. Peace once again, Brother Josh, for that introduction and giving me the privilege to read for you, brothers and sisters, today. And uh, peace to the elders, teachers, and students at ABT or Clubhouse. Uh, no more blog talk on YouTube, and I'm just glad to be here with you guys again on the Shabbat. Uh, thank you. 
Praise God. Brother Jeff, praise God. And you know, we consider it a privilege to have you read for us today and look forward to any and all input that you may have. And judging by this one, you're going to have plenty to say about this one because this is one new. I've never taught this to anybody at ABT. So this is a brand new one, right? And also joining us today on deck with commentary, he is also an absolute Bible Truth University graduate and one of my all-time favorite readers. He's also a longtime member of Absolute Bible Truth. This is the one, the only Kevin J, brother Kevin J. Go ahead, bro. Shabbat shalom to everybody. I hope everybody is doing well on the Shabbat. Of course, I am on deck. Uh, can't wait for us to get started. Hey, you got me in the background if you need me, but uh, love everyone here and uh thank thank everybody for showing up and showing out thank you praise god kevin j praise god and you know we look forward to your commentary as well and you're gonna have something to say about this and of course i cannot overlook the middle heavyweight champion he will be providing us with all the sources that i reference online today this is the middle heavyweight champion of the world mr ortega Go ahead, bro. Hey, what's up, boys and gals? <laughs> Appreciate y'all for coming through for real. And praise God praise for another God. Sab Sabbath. All right. And we're going to jump off into this right now. But before we do, let me just let everybody know that this is our Sabbath class. If this is your first time coming out to check us out. Welcome. We're happy to have you here. And we hope you continue to study with us in the future. But we got to lay some ground rules for the kiddies or even more accurate, the adults with the kiddie mindsets. This is our Sabbath study. This is a sermon. All this simply means for you is basically shut up until the class is done. That means don't be in the chat arguing back and forth with each other. If you got a question for somebody else in the chat, utilize that DM. That's what it's for. Don't spam up the chat will cross conversation because all you're doing is distracting from the class. Shout outs to my mugs who have, who've been doing their jobs, right? But let me tell y'all mugs, one warning is all they get. That's all they get. They get, y'all give them one warning. After that, you mute them. You ain't got to kick them out, you mute them. Because if they don't want to be here after you mute them, they'll leave anyway. But just mute them, right? That's all you got to do. And most importantly, and I still can't believe I still have to tell people this every week, don't come in here asking what are we talking about? It's in the link that you clicked on. It's right there in the link. Gideon post, posted every week telling y'all what the class is going to be about. And I see all the response to it, the thumbs up, the hearts. All of y'all know what the class is going to be about in advance. Gideon puts it right there in the title and still somebody clicks on it and comes in and be like, what y'all talking about? Like, like seriously? I can't even believe that, man. I, I got I got the wonder of some of y'all special needs, for real. You know what I'm saying? I really got a wonder. And this ain't no shot at anybody who has a special needs child because, you know, that would be insensitive. But I know people with special, special needs children, and they don't seem to struggle with this kind of stuff. Like, seriously. So this is more like a special, special needs child. You follow what I'm saying? Just to let y'all know that. Right? I understand you want to think of an excuse just to have something to say. Just say hello to the class. Hey, everybody, how you doing? See, everybody see you. You ain't got to open up awkward with a stupid question. Like this is your first date or something. Now you be nervous on your first date, Ortega, and you just say something stupid. That's how yeah. a lot of y'all be when y'all when y'all first come in the room. You're so nervous, don't even know what to say. Uh, uh, uh. What are y'all talking about? How about hello or shalom to the room? And people will say it back. Okay, now that we got all that out of the way, the title of today's class is Not Everything is a Sign from God. Again, today's class is titled Not Everything is a Sign from God. And this is a perfect time to do this class for a number of reasons. First of all, all y'all knew about all the um, fuss people were making about this total solar eclipse, eclipse we just had on April the 8th. 
Y'all all know about it. And Christians, of all people, were the ones getting the most worked up about this solar eclipse. See, there are people today called modern-day pagans. Like, they call themselves pagans. And there are people today who call themselves astrologers, not to be confused with astronomers. And see, the pagans and the astrologers, I expect them to make a big deal out of an eclipse. Because that's all part of their ideology and their spiritual belief system. You know, I expect that from them. But the Christians were the ones making the biggest deal about this stuff. It was ridiculous. People were trying to say it's a sign of the rapture. People were trying to say it's the sign of the second coming. People were trying to say it's just a sign in general of the end times. But when they couldn't prove it with scripture, they start connecting dots that were not there. And see, this is what people do. They don't read stuff. They read into stuff. That's a big difference. They started making up theories. And I told everybody weeks in advance. Because people ask me in my DM. They said, Josh, what do you think about this eclipse that's coming up? What do you think it means? I said, nothing. It's going to come and go. And some of y'all in the chat right now, you know who you are. If you're listening, you know that's exactly what I told you. And y'all just said, praise God, and kept it moving. Nobody tried to give me any pushback on it. They just said, praise God. And just as I predicted, this eclipse came and went. Nothing happened. But you got people who get in their pride. Because let me tell y'all something about Christians and when they make errors in judgment and make false predictions that don't come true. Let me tell y'all a little something about Christians. They got a lot of pride. See, they ain't going to do a retraction video or go on social media and say, you know what? Goofed. I didn't know what I was talking about, y'all. I, I took a shot at this. I made a, a guess, and I was wrong. You know what they're going to do? They're just going to keep it moving. They're going to act like they didn't just lie to literally hundreds of thousands of people online. They're going to act like that. Or even worse, they're going to try to pretend like this is the beginning of something. See, this is what people do when they make false predictions. This is what deceivers do. They'll make a false prediction and say, this is going to happen on this particular date. Y'all wait and see. That's what they'll tell you. And then when it doesn't happen, they'll say, well, it, it, it happened, but it's the beginning. This is going to set off a series of events. And that's all they do. And we fall for this, mainly because when it comes to the Bible and what signs from God are, Christians are some of the dumbest people on the planet. In this day and age, with all of this information and technology that we have literally in the palm of our hands, in the form of a cell phone, there is no way any Christian should have been shook by this past eclipse, should have been scared, should have been nervous about this past eclipse. There's no way. And the fact that I saw even pastors jumping up trying to capitalize on an event that is not only predictable, but has been occurring since the beginning of time, shows me just how spiritually off modern-day Christians are. They don't know anything. They don't study. That's why they're out here guessing. Just like if you didn't study for a test, if it's multiple choice, what you going to do, Ortega? If you didn't study for the test, what you going to do? Uh, when you take the test, if you didn't yeah. study for it and it's multiple choice, what you gonna do? I'm gonna guess. What do everybody do? You gonna guess? That's what you gotta do when you don't study. You guess. Make an e educated okay. guess. Right, <laughs> an educated guess. They don't make educated guesses because an educated guess would have been them looking up what an eclipse is. So we're going to get into this class today, and I'm going to show you not everything is a sign from God. I'm going to show you what signs from God, from God looks like, what they look like, and what do they mean? How can you identify them? There are different kinds of signs in the Bible. And y'all need to learn this because y'all up here getting anxiety and panic attacks. Ooh, there's an eclipse coming. Y'all should have saw the internet. 
How many of y'all heard about the Statue of Liberty recently being struck by lightning? Anybody heard about that? Mm -hmm. On the 4th of April? Yes. Anybody? Yes. Yeah. Oh, they were making a big deal about that too. Um, we're going to look into all of that. I'm going to show y'all when you really analyze and start looking stuff up, these people are stupid. These people are idiots. There's no nice way to say it. These people are freaking morons spreading stupidity like a virus. That's what they're doing. And we got to stop listening to them. If it were up to me, I'd have them all in a nut house somewhere. But it, the, you know what the, the funny thing is, Jeff, Kevin J, Ortega, they're already in nut houses. They're called churches. That's where they are. I'm just going to let y'all see it for yourself. Don't get mad at me. You follow what I'm saying? I've never gotten mad at somebody who called me stupid after they corrected me. So you can call me stupid as long as you set me straight. Don't just call me stupid and leave me twisted in the wind. You follow what I'm saying? See, I can't handle that, bro. Bro, you stupid. Dang, bro, that hurt. But this is the right way you do it. Oh, okay. Okay, we good. You feel me? See, I ain't going to call you stupid and leave you stupid. That would be stupid on my part. See, when I say you're stupid, I'm going to try to get you right. So don't get in your feelings about being stupid if ain't nobody going to put you on game. See, I'm going to put you on game. You follow what I'm saying? That's what you do. You put them on game. Right? So we're going to start this first by looking up the word. Let me go ahead and um, find um, Ortega. Ortega, send me uh, a DM right now so I can find you easily. Yeah, because I got to pull this up and I'm going to send this to you. We're going to look up the word superstition. Because <laughs> a lot of y'all, that's what y'all are. Y'all are superstitious. Okay, I got you, um, mister. Here's the link right here. Give you time to share that. I want you to share your screen. We're going to look at the word superstition. This is um, Oxford Languages for everybody on Clubhouse and YouTube. Now, this is the definition of superstition. And I want y'all to pay attention to this. Oxford Languages, superstition. Now, Excessively credulous belief in and reverence for supernatural beings. And it gives an example. He dismissed the ghost story as mere superstition. But this is a definition we're looking for. The second one. A widely held but unjustified belief in a supernatural causation, meaning you think something is caused by something supernatural. And it's an unjustified belief, meaning you have no proof of this. Then it says, leading to certain consequences of an action or event or a practice based on such a belief. So what is superstition? It's a widely held but unjustified belief in a supernatural causation that leads to certain consequences of an action or event. Like, for instance, believing that this past solar eclipse would lead to certain consequences or actions or events in, in Christianity's belief, the rapture or the second coming of Jesus. But nowhere in the Bible can you read about a solar eclipse that can be predicted being a sign of the second coming of Jesus or of some alleged rapture. So that makes you superstitious. You know, superstition, like the same kind of people that believe that if you walk under a ladder, that's bad luck. Or if you break a mirror, that's seven years of bad luck. Or a four-leaf clover, is good luck. Or a horseshoe, is good luck. Or you hear people say, thank your lucky stars. That's all superstitious talk. And Christians are the most superstitious people on the planet. How can you be superstitious and say you believe in God at the same time? How can you believe that if a black cat crosses your path, that's bad luck? Did not God create black cats? Mm -hmm. 
Y'all act like God didn't create black cats. You know, step on a crack, break your mother's back. We used to say this stuff when we were children. We went from children with silly superstitions to adults with even sillier superstitions. Now you got all these Christians running around scared because of a foretold and predicted solar eclipse. Oh, that's a sign. No, that wasn't a sign. That was a solar eclipse. You guys are slow. And this is who's leading us mostly. I'm trying to get y'all right. I don't want y'all walking around here acting like y'all are stupid. We don't need a bunch of superstitious morons frightening us. Oh, you broke a mirror. That's seven years of bad luck. How? How? What's that come from? That's a bunch of pagan nonsense. It's time to grow up, y'all. We believe in God over here. If a black cat crosses your path and that brings you bad luck, that's because you did something to God and God is using that black cat to bring you bad luck. That's how that works. The cat in of itself can do nothing. Y'all are giving supernatural power to a cat. Because belief in luck and fortune and curses and blessings, that's belief in the supernatural. That's what that is. So you're giving a cat Supernatural power over you. A cat. You know who else believed that cats had powers? The ancient Egyptians. See, that's what the pagans do. The pagans give creatures, everyday creatures, supernatural power. They feared them. We don't even know this stuff. And now adults are doing that. And there are a lot of them, right? But that's what it says about superstition. Now let's look up, up another word. Let me um pull this up. Going to send this to my guy. This is um psycho psychologytoday.com. Let me show y'all something. Because I can't believe I even have to talk to Christians about this. We're gonna look up a word that a lot of y'all probably never heard before, but you're gonna know it now. Pull it up for us, please. The word we're looking at is called pareidolia. Pareidolia. In the chat, have y'all ever heard this word before? Heck Give not. me a, a W if you've ever heard this word, pareidolia. See, I'm a psychology major. Y'all finna learn some psychology because at the root of all of this stuff is psychology that it, which deals with your mental health. And a lot of Christians don't have good mental health. Something is wrong with them. But this is what pareidolia is, right? And y'all, even though you never heard of this word, you've seen it in action. Pareidolia is a phenomenon wherein people perceive likenesses on random images, such as faces, animals, or objects on clouds and rock formations. Clubhouse, YouTube, Discord. How many of y'all went online and people had pictures of clouds that look like things and say, oh, it's a sign. Give me a W in the chat if you ever seen anything like that. Have y'all ever seen that? What about you, um, Ortega? You ever seen that? Yeah. Jeff, Kevin, you ever all, seen that? All the time, brother. People on Clubhouse, come off your mic. You ever seen that? This is called pareidolia. Let's see what it's talking about. Let's get into this. People don't know this. I'm trying to get y'all right because I'm tired of y'all being tricked. It says, pareidolia is a phenomenon wherein people perceive likenesses on random images, such as faces, animals, or objects on clouds and rock formations. It is not a clinical diagnosis, nor is it a disorder. So that doesn't mean you got a mental illness or anything. The brain has a tendency to assign meaning wherever it can. That's how our brains operate. Seeing a rabbit in the clouds or an animal instead of leaves in the brush is a commonplace experience of pareidolia. The word derives from the Greek words para, beside or alongside, and eidos, image or shape. Early research on this phenomenon appeared in the late 1800s. A 
paper by German physicist, philosopher, and psychologist Gustav Fechner discussed the human inclination to see faces in objects. Then it says, the tendency to see what's not there. Well-known examples of paranoia include the image of Jesus on burnt toast. Anybody, I know a lot of y'all are young, but do anybody remember that? Yeah. Anybody in the chat, Clubhouse, YouTube, when they saw that picture of Jesus on burnt on, on some burnt toast, if you haven't, just Google it. Right? They thought that was a sign. They thought that was a sign. Right? Paradolia. But look what else it says. It says, well-known experience of Paradolia include the image of Jesus on burnt toast, the man on the moon, and a Cheetos corn snack that looked like the gorilla Harambe. The latter sold on eBay for... $99,900. Are we reading this right? This guy sold a Cheeto. You know, like little Cheetos you eat? Of the Gorilla Harambe. He sold it on eBay for $99,900. That's almost $100,000, y'all. For a freaking Cheeto. Man, I wish I would have found that Cheeto. <laughs> I would have sold it in the middle. You have that. Because, it, see, this is how bad it is. This is how superstitious people are. Because he thought that Cheeto was some kind of sign, obviously. The person that bought it. He thought it was some kind of sign. It was just a Cheeto. You know what would have happened to Brother Josh would have saw that Cheeto? Hmm, this Cheeto looked like Harambe. Crunch. <laughs> And kept it moving. You want to see more examples of pareidolia? Go to the supermarket and look at some ginger roots. Anybody ever done that before? Mm -mm. Go look at some ginger roots. Those look like bodies sometimes. I saw one time, I went to the supermarket one time and I saw some ginger roots. I thought one of them was baby Groot from the event, uh, from Gardens of the Galaxy. Uh, call that thing baby group. That's what it looked like. But I didn't walk around, oh, this is a sign. It's called pareidolia. And Christians get hit with this the most. They lie on their back looking at the clouds. Ooh, look at these clouds. Ooh, look. Ooh, look at this. Look at this rock. This is like a face. It's a sign from God. That's pareidolia, y'all. It's your brain. Making uh, sense of random formations. Yeah. That's what it is. I'm trying to educate y'all on this so y'all won't fall for this nonsense. But let's finish off the rest of it, what it says. It says, the brain has an inclination to recognize patterns and apply meaning to what it sees. The fussy form gyrus, gyrus is the temporal lobe of the, of the cortex activates to process facial recognition. In addition, the tendency for this recognition is an evolutionary byproduct. Ancient man was better off recognizing if a face was a familiar friend or an unfamiliar foe. So this is pareidolia, y'all. That's all this is. When people see stuff in clouds and in coffee and on trees and on rock formations, and I'm going to show y'all something else. I'm going to send you another um link, um Ortega. Check this out. Because we're going to show y'all some images, some examples of this. And he'll just scroll down as we go to him. There you go, bro. Let me know when you got that. Do y'all see what he's showing right here? This is... um. Shutterstock. You can just Google this. Look at these images right here. Do y'all see the first one? What's that look like to you, Ortega? Like a face smiling. Right? Like a face. But that's just in a tree. What's this? Look at that second one. They're like a mailbox or something. Or, or a post or something. They're like mm -hmm. two eyes and a mouth, doesn't it? Yeah. Look at this house. 
You see them windows? What does it look like to you? I'm trying to grin or something. Two eyeballs. Yeah. Two eyeballs. Look at that tree stump. What's that look like to y'all? Smiley face. face What's that look like? That's a face, out. right? What's this right here? Look at the little coffee. What's that look like? You see the coffee? Mm -hmm. What's that look like to y'all? What's that look like, Ortega, Kevin, Jeff? What's that look like? Like a big, uh, big old smiley face right there. Like, like a big face. smiley face, right? Right? Scroll down. Let's get some more, Ortega. Scroll down. Look at that book bag right there with the zipper. <laughs> you see that? Like a smiley like a face. Character. Like a Muppet character or something. Look at that rock on the ground. Like two eyes in the mouth, right? Yeah. Look at the one next to it. What's that look like? <clears throat> you see that? See the look two like eyes? <laughs> yes. Look at the one on the on the bottom right hand corner. That's a coffee lid. You go to McDonald's, Starbucks, see them all the time. What that look like? Two eyes and a mouth, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Look at that cloud formation right there. What's that look like? Like a dog or a horse lying on his back. Oh yeah. Doesn't it? And so on and so forth. Y'all get the picture. This is pareidolia. And what Christians will do, this is just one of the ways that they deceive themselves. They'll have pareidolia. They'll see the clouds and they like a man. Oh, it's a sign. No, that's pareidolia. That's your mind playing tricks on you. See, I need to let y'all know this so y'all can't get caught up in this. So y'all won't get lost in the sauce. So y'all won't be spending $100,000 for a freaking Cheeto. I'm showing y'all this. And I'm going to show you how the Bible relates to this. This is all in your head, sisters and brothers. This is your brain trying to make sense of something. And people are uneducated and they get in their feelings because they don't know this stuff. That's why you can't fool me with this mess. I keep telling y'all, I am a psychology major and I am a Bible teacher. I am also a philosopher and a debater. Those are four of the worst combinations you can have in one individual if you're trying to run some game on them. That's the worst. You follow what I'm saying? That is the worst. We need to understand this stuff, right? But now, Let's move on. Now let's go to Genesis 1, Jeff. I wanted to let y'all see this. Superstition and pareidolia. That's all it is. That's Christianity. Superstitions and pareidolia. That's what this is. And y'all calling this the word. Y'all calling this, oh, this is a sign. No, it's not. It's a sign that you ain't got no sense. That's what it is. Y'all cannot get mad because I'm telling you the truth. I don't want y'all to be fooled anymore. I don't want y'all out around here with a panic attack because a freaking solar eclipse came and will be coming. I'm going to show y'all something about the solar eclipse that a lot of y'all probably did not know. You're going to feel real stupid once you read this. I just asked y'all to do research. You know what I'm saying? Research before you wild out. Is that asking too much, Jeff? Research before you wild out. Somebody tell y'all something. You don't be like, wait, wait, wait. Let, let me look into that. You follow what I'm saying? Y'all go running and screaming. As soon as somebody tell y'all something, they ain't gonna look at it. Let me let me look into this. But this is Genesis 1. Because let me show y'all something about Signs that a lot of people didn't know that the way the Bible uses it. Genesis 1 14 to 18. Read, please, Jeff. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for sun mm -hmm. and for seasons and for days and years. Now, this is at the creation. It says, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them, the lights, be for signs 
and for seasons and for days and years. These lights are referring to the sun, the moon, and the stars. We're going to read that. But he said, let them be for signs. And this is where a lot of Christians get confused. Because they see this word signs right here, and they automatically think it means supernatural signs. No. It does not mean that. The Bible uses this word in more than one sense. The word sign here means to point out when it's daytime, when it's nighttime, when it's winter, when it's summer, when it's spring, when it's fall. When a year changes, that's one definition of sign. That is a normal sign. Most Christians who read the Bible, when they see the word signs, they all go, oh, it's a sign. But what kind of sign is it? Is it an everyday, ordinary sign? Or is it a supernatural sign? Because the Bible just says signs. And you got to know which one it's talking about. And because a lot of Christians are ignorant of the scriptures, Whenever they hear the word signs, they automatically think, oh, see, that's a sign of something, you know, supernatural, like the coming of Jesus or, or, or the rapture or something. Y'all don't read y'all Bibles. Y'all just don't. Y'all just don't read your Bibles, plain and simple. You don't. Don't y'all know that the sun, the moon, and the stars are signs within themselves? And you see the sun every day. I ain't never seen y'all get excited when the sun rise. Hmm. Do you, Jeff? Do you get excited when the sun rise? Like, do you be, oh my God, the sun's coming up. No, but the Bible still calls them signs. These are normal signs. When the moon come out at night, Kevin J, do you turn into a werewolf or something? <laughs> no. No. And that's where this stuff came from with the pagans and stuff. They believed that the celestial bodies, like the sun and the moon, had power over you. What a, the ideal of a full moon. All my DBZ fans, how the Saiyans transform at the full moon, that's where all that stuff comes. That comes from ancient Japanese and other cultures where they believed that the celestial bodies had power over us. Over here in... um. American culture with the werewolves and stuff. Even to this day, people think that insanity is influenced by the moon. That's why they're called lunatics. Luna means moon. No, lu no Luna, moon. It means moon. Luna. It means moon. Where my Spanish people at? How do you say moon in Spanish? Where my Spanish people at in the audience? You say Luna. Come on, y'all. That's why when somebody is crazy, you call them loony. That's why when you were watching, when you were watching cartoons, you had something called Looney Tunes. They would do crazy stuff. <laughs> That's why people think that this stuff is influenced by the moon. That's why you have crazy stuff happening. If you ever watched a horror movie before and it's nighttime, don't y'all have a full moon out? Y'all ever notice that? No matter what horror movie you watch, if it's a night scene, it's probably going to more than likely show a full moon because they think that people get crazy around a full moon. And there are correlations between that, by the way. But the point is, the moon is a sign. The sun is a sign. Us, the stars, just the normal stars, they're signs to let us know what time of year it is. You can look at a constellation. Go outside at night, look at a constellation, and depending on where you are on the planet and where that constellation is in the sky, when you look up, you can tell what kind of what time of year it is. Go look at your constellations. Look where a constellation is in the spring versus where it is in the winter. If you look up, Orion's belt might be over here in the spring. And then when winter come, Orion's belt all the way over there. And if you memorize the locations, you can tell what time of year it is. You don't need a, a thermometer to know how cold it is. Just look up at the sky. 
But he called these signs. These are normal signs. And I had a Christian online, on Facebook, when I was trying to tell them before the eclipse happened, I said, that's not a sign of anything. They took me to Genesis 1 and 14. And try to say, this is talking about a supernatural sign. No, it's not. These are talking about regular signs. You got regular signs and you got supernatural signs. But keep reading. Read verse 15 and keep going. Verse 15. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So and we see what their purposes are to give light upon the earth. Right? Continue, please. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So the, the greater light to rule the day, we know that's the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night, that is the moon. And he made the stars also. But he just told you that these lights were given for signs. What kind of signs? To let us know what the seasons are. For days and years. You know that a day comes to an end at sunset. That's all you know. That's what these celestial bodies are for, y'all. That's why God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. To help us monitor time. And that's what a sign indicates. What time it is. Just regular Old time that you see all day, every day, but you don't get scared. But you get scared of an eclipse, though. And I'm going to show y'all what's that about. You don't get scared when the moon comes out at night, but you're freaking out about a solar eclipse. That's the problem. Y'all don't know what a sign is. That's why y'all think every sign is from God. Because you don't know the difference. And that's why they'll come in here with this attitude and stuff, because a lot of people, they're just in their feelings. They want to come in here in their feelings. They want you to debate their emotions. I don't want to debate your emotions. That's what people want. It's all emotions. Well, I feel, well, I think, well, I think you should do some research. I think you should get your fat straight. This little snowflake generation want to put feelings above fact. Everybody in their feelings. You, everybody wants you to respect their feelings. I respect everybody's feelings as long as they respect the facts that I bring on the table. You give people biblical information, you give people secular information, you give them scientific information, and they'll fold their arms and say, well, I feel. See, that's where you lose me at. Because I don't care about your feelings. Not if you don't care about the facts. I don't care about your feelings. And this is what this generation is teaching us. This generation is teaching you it's all about how you feel. Facts don't matter. That's the reason why if you are a boy and you feel like a girl, they'll tell you, okay, you're a girl. Ain't nobody going to look at, ain't nobody going to like, let's look at your bi biology. Let's look at your skeletal uh, frame. Let's see if you have a womb. See, that's when you start dropping facts. No, 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 no. I feel like a girl. See, this is what happens when you start putting feelings above fact and people get mad people get pissed off because you just you know this is just the facts i keep telling y'all man two plus two being four should never offend anybody should it if i get up here and say two plus two is four should anybody get offended by that but people do people do Two plus two being four, they, they get offended by that. Oh, oh I, I, I'm offended by that. What are you offended by? Because two plus two equals four? That offends you? We got to be serious, y'all. Let's deal with facts. But let's move on. Keep reading. Let's see what else about this. Genesis chapter one, verse 17. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule. It says, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven or the sky 
to give light upon the earth. That's the purpose of them as, and also to let us know what time of day it is, what year it is, what month it is, all that stuff. Right? Continue, please. Verse 18. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the sun and the moon and the stars, they are there to divide the light from the darkness. They are signs. These are normal signs, y'all. Normal. Don't read the word signs in the Bible and try to make it always mean something like a wonder or something supernatural or something special. That's not what we do here. We got to look at the context to know if it's a sign from God in the supernatural sense. Because in the normal sense, all of these are signs from God, sun, moon, and stars. They're signs that there is a God. But it's nothing, it's nothing that special that we're looking at in of itself. We gotten used to that. God say this is the everyday stuff. And what people try to do is they try to take everyday stuff and they try to make it special. Right? But let's continue. Let's go to Psalms chapter 136. So just look at this a little bit more. Wait, this is ridiculous. I've never seen so many Christians worked up about a natural occurrence before in my life. Solar eclipses are natural occurrences, people. They're nothing special in of themselves. You even got people going to scriptures, you know, where it talks about God's going to make it get night and all of that. And that's tomorrow, the solar eclipse. No, wrong, wrong, wrong. Learn the difference between a normal sign in the sky and a supernatural sign in the sky when it involves the sun, the moon, or the stars. Y'all don't know the difference. Y'all are confusing regular astronomy with pagan astrology. I learned about solar eclipses when I was in the third grade. I'm 43 years old now. We did not have all these smartphones and iPhones and stuff when I was growing up, and an eclipse ain't ever scared me when I was growing up. They thought an eclipse is coming. I'm like, cool, I can't wait to see it. I want to walk around, oh my God, this is the end of the world. We want to think Jeff would tell you Jeff is 11 years older than me. We want to freaked out by eclipses like that in our generation. It's this little snowflake pansy generation that we don't been raising to be scared of their own shadows that freak out at everything. As y'all, that's why I'm trying to get these prodigies up out of here. We don't raise a bunch of punk. Literally scared of your own shadow. Literally afraid of your own shadow. Scared of the sun and the moon. Oh, the, the, the moon orbited in front of the sun. Oh no, um, sun, that's, that's, that's happened before. Really, Dad? Yeah. In fact, it happened back in 2017. You were around then, son. I was? Yeah. When I watched it on the news, you know what I saw on the college campuses? I saw a bunch of people having an eclipse party. When I went on the internet, I saw a bunch of Christians freaking out. How in the world are the secular people and the unbelievers, why they all come and we freaked out? And you best believe they had a field day going in on these Christians when they made something about this eclipse and nothing happened. They had a field day. Y'all love looking stupid, don't y'all? We don't even understand how stupid we make each other look. We trying to sell you Christianity. I'm trying to sell y'all on Christianity, but too many of y'all make it look stupid. How I'm supposed to do my job when y'all are making us look stupid? You follow what I'm saying? I saw somebody in the chat saying earlier, this brother's using talking about science and psychology. See, that's the problem right there. That's the problem right there, y'all. 
Y'all want to spiritualize everything. Y'all don't think God wants us to deal in the natural world. He don't want us to be carnal, but we, he knows we still got to operate in the carnal or the natural world. We still got to do that. You don't over-spiritualize everything when you go to work. You got a job at a fast food restaurant. You don't over-spiritualize your check. <laughs> Let your... He cut off? Uh, he froze. Oh, dang. Didn't that, Jeff? Uh, you froze for a couple of he seconds. You froze now. Okay, I know what to do. Hold on one second. I'm going to leave and come back. Hold on. Coming back to the stage. Let me see if they can hear me. Okay, how do I sound now? Yeah, wow. sometimes you got it. You're good. Wow. Yeah, but what I was saying is, Jeff, how would you feel if you worked at a fast food restaurant or any job and then it was payday, your boss told you we're going to give you a spiritual check? It's going to be a problem, man. Big problem. How that? You see how we want to we wanna over-spiritualize everything until it's time for us to eat? Oh, I'm hungry, baby. What did you cook for dinner tonight? Oh, Jesus said, and the Bible, and you know, Deuteronomy says, Man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that comes about the mouth of God. So you need to live by this word. Okay, baby, but you know what I'm saying? That baked chicken smelling kind of good. Can I? No, 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 no. Man shall not live by bread alone. <laughs> See, we want to over-spiritualize everything until we, until we have to deal with reality. That's what Christianity has turned the Bible into. They don't turn it into the Chronicles of Narnia, some, some giant cabinet you could just escape away into into a fantasy world until you're forced to deal with reality that's what they've turned christianity into and that's why a lot of unbelievers call it a fairy tale because they see us treating it like a fairy tale right but we're going to psalm 136 scared of a freaking solar eclipse get out of here man but uh, but I'm, I, I'm supposed to feel bad for calling them stupid. I'm supposed to feel bad for that. How many of y'all got dogs? Any pet owners here in the chat? Y'all own the dogs? The cat Do you? count. Yep. How do you feel whenever you vacuum and your dog start running around crazy? How do you feel about your dog when it does that? Tell the truth. What are you thinking to yourself? Y'all tell me in chat, what are you thinking to yourself when your dog does that? When you turn on the vacuum and start <laughs> barking all at the vacuum and stuff. What are you thinking? Stupid dog. That's exactly right. Is that what you're thinking? Stupid dog is just a vacuum. That's exactly what you're thinking. Keep it real. And you vacuuming like every day or every other day and the dog still ain't figured out it's just a vacuum. Exactly. But you know what's so funny? There's even been instances of dogs finally getting used to the vacuum and no longer being scared. So you trying to tell me you're dumber than a dog? That's what you're trying to tell me? See, I understand if you've never seen or heard of something before, but once you understand that it's a normal occurrence, why are you still freaking out? You either, you either have a mental disorder or you're stupid. Christians are supposed to know better. I keep telling, that's why I hold y'all to a higher standard. I don't expect the pagans to know anything or the unbelievers. I expect the world's spiritual leaders to understand stuff. Right? So like I understand, just like I expect a parent to understand something that a child doesn't. We're freaking out over a solar eclipse. Oh my God, are you kidding me? A solar eclipse got Christians scared. Next thing I'm going to be saying, the sun got them scared. The regular sunrise. But don't worry. Psalm 136, verses 7 to 9. Go ahead and read. Psalm 136, verse 7. 
to mm -hmm. him that made great lights for his mercy endureth forever. This is talking about God, right? Is it to him that made great lights for his mercy endure forever? What lights um, is he talking about? Keep reading. Verse 8, the sun to rule by day for his mercy endureth forever. We read that in Genesis 1 and 16, the sun to rule by day for his mercy, God's mercy endure forever. And what else we got? Verse 9, the moon and stars to rule by night for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night for his mercy endureth forever. But Genesis called them signs. They're normal signs. Y'all got to learn a bit between a normal sign and a supernatural one. Y'all want to know an example of a normal sign? If you were raised on a farm or if you know anybody who has a chicken coop, when you hear that rooster crowing in the morning, that's normal. You don't freak out. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus is coming back. No, dude, that's what that's what crow, that's what chickens do. That's what roosters do. They do that every time around the same morning. That's that's what they do. Calm down. If it's your first time on a farm and you're a kid and that happens, I can understand that'll take you off guard. That makes sense, right? But bruh, you've been living out here for five years and this same rooster does this every morning and you still freaking out thinking it's a sign from God. But at the same time though, look how God used a rooster to um, uh, prophesy what Peter was gonna do when he denied Jesus. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. You see how one is normal and the other one is not normal? Do y'all see that? Mm -hmm. See, the smart Christian, they understand that when the when uh, Jesus told Peter, you know, you're going to deny me three times. And that he used um, a rooster crowing as a sign of that. And when Peter heard that, he remembered Jesus' words and he wept bitterly. Right? But what if Jesus would have told Peter when the crow gets up and and crows in the morning, there's going to be a sign. Peter would be like, well, Lord, that happens every morning. How is that a sign? He made it happen at an unusual time. Right? Or he made it happen at the normal time, but made the events play out so that it timed perfectly. Y'all need to understand these things. Christians take normal things and try to make them signs. That's what they do. And an eclipse is a normal thing, sisters and brothers. That's a normal occurrence. How are you going to take something that's normal and make it a sign when there's nothing to go along with it to make it a sign? That's why they go and they start making stuff up. You see, I'm um, farmed the cross right over the middle of America, and, 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 and the name of the, the city it was over was called Rapture. And, you know, just going. You know, Gideon did. Gideon touched on this in the last video he made. Just connecting dots that are not even there. That's what y'all do. Not everything is a sign from God. And then you ask them, how do you know it's a sign? They retreat to them feelings. Well, I just feel, see, that's the problem. You don't even know how prophecy works. Prophecy does not operate or activate based on how you feel. Y'all think that's how prophecy works. Like you can just will prophecy into existence. That's not how prophecy works. Prophecy don't care about your feelings. A lot of times God gave prophets prophecy and it went against what they wanted to do. God didn't care. God told Moses, you got to go down into Egypt. I was like, I don't want to go. God said, I'm going to use you and your brother to free my people. That was a prophecy. I'm telling you, Moses, to tell them that I'm going to free them. Moses didn't want to do it. Notice how Moses' feelings had no bearing on the prophecy. But y'all Christians think if you feel something is a sign, 
That makes it a sign. Y'all too emotional with this stuff, man. That's why I don't like modern day church. They don't go to modern day church. You go in there, people literally fainting and falling out. Over what? Holy Spirit don't make nobody fall out. Holy Spirit don't make you cry. Show me in the scriptures where anybody ever caught the Holy Ghost and they, <laughs> that's what y'all see. Am I lying? Jeff, Kevin, Ortega, y'all see them, y'all see them, y'all been to church. Oh, Don't y'all yeah. see this? They be crying. <laughs> crying. Tears in their eyes. Come on, they got to run around. Now, when did the Holy Ghost ever make anybody do that? Hmm. That's not the Holy Ghost, y'all. That's feelings. Your emotion. religion is emotion fueled, not spirit fueled. Y'all can't tell the difference. Y'all can't tell the difference. Drooling and stuff. Falling all out. You know, I see people do the same thing at concerts. Did y'all know that? I see people faint at concerts. I see people can't sit still at a concert. What's the difference? Holy Spirit don't make you do that. That's just not how it works. That's emotion. And people get caught up in their feelings and they get mad. Y'all need to learn how to tell the difference between fact and feelings or fact and opinion. Y'all don't know the difference. And it's very egotistical to think that the world should cater to your feelings and your emotions and operate based on how you feel. That's why I can't stand somebody to get caught all up in their feelings. They don't care about anything that's real anymore. You can't talk to somebody like that. You got to let them people be. You and your feelings. You don't. You can't see this anymore. Facts over feelings. That's how we're supposed to be. We don't supposed to be over here. Oh, I, I feel this way, and that's what people do. They saw the soul eclipse. They feel this is a sign of the rapture. I feel this is a sign of the second coming. Give me the scripture showing that. Well, I, I can't really show you in the scriptures. <laughs> you, you know, of course not. But I, I, I feel. Phil, see, see, shut up. That's why God said don't listen to false prophets. He said they prophesy the vision of their own heart. In the Bible, your heart represents what you think or how you feel. Y'all better wake up. Um, Let's move on. Let's go to C-Rock in the Apocrypha. We're going to go to 43. We got a long way to go, man. These emotions, bro, they getting us killed. That's what they're doing. We're going to read about the sun and the moon again. Look how it's described right here. Sea rock or Ecclesiasticus. You can try to find it if you want to, right. Ortega. You trying to find it? Yeah, it was. All you got to do, go to Google, and then just type in C-Rock 43, and then type in Bible Hub right behind that. And then click on the first thing that comes up if you want to be able to find it. And then C-Rock, you got to go see. No, not like that. It's spelled S-I-S-I-R, S-I-R. You still got a C up there. Delete all of that. I'm trying, brother. <laughs> yeah. S I R I R A C H. All right. This one like that. Yep, right now. That's it. You you just own it. And then put Bible Hub behind it. Now click on that and go to King James Version. If it has it, if not, just click on whatever translation you want. Because if you click on the King James, it's going to erase it. It's set up real weird like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, click in, look in the chat. Keanu got it up there. Click in the chat. You'll see.
There he is. He got it. So we're going to read about the sun and the moon and what God says about Because didn't he call them signs, Jeff? He called them signs, didn't he? And the stars too, didn't he? That's what he, he called said. them signs. So these are normal signs. We're going to deal with the supernatural signs. Right? So this is C-Rock 43. And we're going to read verses 1 to 6. Go ahead and read, Jeff. Sirach chapter 43, verse 1. The pride mm -hmm. of the height, the clear firmament, the beauty of heaven with his glorious show. Mm -hmm. The sun, when it appeareth, declaring at his rising a marvelous instrument, the work of the Most High. Now look what it said. The sun, when it appeareth, declaring at his rising a marvelous instrument, the work of the Most High. Continue. Verse 3, at noon it parcheth the country, and who can abide the burning heat thereof? It said, at noon it parches the country, you know, like dries out the country, dries out the land, and who can abide, which means handle the burning heat thereof, continue. Verse 4, a man blowing a furnace is in works of heat, but the sun burneth the mountains three times more breathing out fiery vapors and sending forth bright beams, it dimmeth the eyes. It said a man blowing a furnace is in works of heat. You know, somebody, um, today I had like a little fan back in the day, or they'll be fanning it like that to make the furnace get hotter. It says, but the sun burneth the mountains three times more, breathing out fiery vapors. And sending forth bright beams, it dimmeth the eyes. Like, that's why you can't look at the sun directly, right? Hurt your eyes, right? Make you blind, <laughs> right? Continue. Verse 5. Great is the Lord that made it, and at his commandment runneth hastily. So great is the Lord that made the sun, and at his commandment runneth hastily. That means it moves quickly, right? Read verse 6, though. We read about the sun. What does it say about the moon? Go ahead. Verse 6, he made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. You said he made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. Jeff, what kind of sign is it talking about here? Is it talking about a normal sign or a supernatural one? Just a normal sign. Just a normal one, but it called it a sign to the world. See, Christians don't know the difference. They see that word sign in their Bibles and they think it always means like a sign, sign. Oh, so it's a sign that is. No, it's just a normal sign. There are normal everyday signs, normal monthly signs, normal yearly signs. And then there are supernatural signs, y'all. We don't know the difference. We just see the word sign and think it always means a supernatural one. No, there are regular signs. Like with a woman. She usually gets a sign that she's about to start her period. She probably started cramping or something. That's a sign that she's about to have a cycle. Women will tell you that. That's a sign. That's how y'all know in advance. You women just get caught slipping. And, oh, man. I can feel it coming. That's that sign. Right? But if a woman ain't nowhere near that time of the month, and she start cramping the exact same way she feels every time that time of the month come, now she's going to be like, wait, something's out of the ordinary. Something's off. I don't usually feel this way until it's about that time of the month. And it's nowhere near it. So why am I feeling like this? Do so y'all see how it went from a normal sign to something out of the ordinary? Right. That's how signs work. They go from the um, go off the ordinary. They go from that. You know what I'm saying? This is basic stuff. We're supposed to be mature enough to handle this. You follow what I'm saying? We get caught up in stuff. This is real basic stuff. This is not hard stuff. 
God gives us signs and stuff all the time, regular, normal signs. When you see the leaves start to fall off or the leaves change colors, what's that a sign of, Jeff? When That's the leaves the, start changing color, what? That means the fall huh? is approaching or we're in the midst of the fall. That means fall is approaching. That's a sign. But what would you think, Jeff? It's spring right now. Spring just started and you saw the leaves change in color like it was fall. What would you think then? Then that would be something out of the ordinary. That would be something out of the ordinary. Then you can come and say, Josh, I think this is a sign from God. Why you say that, Jeff? Because the leaves have never changed color in the spring. So, so far, do everybody understand how signs work, like the difference in the chat, clubhouse, YouTube? Do everybody understand the difference, how you can tell when something is a sign from God or a supernatural sign versus just a normal sign? Mm -hmm. This is basic stuff. Leaves change colors in the fall, not in the spring. Or they start changing colors near the end or something like that, not in the beginning. Y'all know that. I ain't never seen nobody get all bent out of shape when they see the leaves changing color during fall season. <laughs> Josh, the leaves are changing colors. Yeah, bro, it's like, you know, late August, early September. Yeah, but th they're changing colors, Josh. They do this every year. Bro, how long you been alive? <laughs> <laughs> you, you follow what I'm saying? That so Christian sound to me when they were going crazy about this solar eclipse. How long you been alive, bro? <laughs> like for real? You don't know that the leaves change every year around this time? That's a sign, but it's a normal sign, right? It's a normal sign. For instance, let me make it even more basic for y'all. I like to break it down simple. Jeff, if you've been out working all day sweating and the armpits get a little spicy, what is that a sign of that you need to what? You need to take a shower. You need to take a shower. See, God gives you signs. See, we, God ain't got you walking around here wondering if you're funky. He gives you a sign. Huh? You follow what I'm saying? This is the God we serve. These are everyday signs. But if Jeff when it took a nice, long, hot, warm shower, and he's scrubbing, and he get out, and he's still smelling like that. Jeff gonna say something is off with my body chemistry. Something is wrong because that doesn't usually happen when I shower. Y'all think about it. God gives us signs every day. When your stomach is growling, what is usually that a sign of? Jeff, if your stomach is growling. Uh, hunger. Hunger. But if I just took Jeff to a buffet and he been eating like it's no tomorrow, and then as soon as we get to the house, his stomach is still growling, Jeff going to say something is off with me, bro, because I just ate all this food and my stomach is still growling. Y'all understand yet? You see, simple signs. I don't see nobody getting excited about simple signs. But that's what y'all did with that eclipse, though. But if I jump up and say, y'all stupid, why well, you got to be so mean, bro? You are stupid. This this always happens. What's going on with you? Or are you losing your mind? You either stupid or you're losing your mind. Which one is it? I just feel that the eclipse, no, no, eclipses always happen. Next, please. And um, I think about mm -hmm. these signs, these so-called signs, we've been seeing this for years, and all of them are O for it. None of them came true, not one that I know of. Came not, not one. Not one. Not one. That's why I said, man, to be a Christian, you have to literally be brain dead for the most part. You got to give up all your ability to think. You got to surrender your ability to think. You do. To be a Christian this day and age, you do. Just shut your brain completely off. That's why it's so easy for us to be deceived, y'all. We, we, we're getting deceived to easily and that's why i'm getting so worried because every generation is like we're getting stupider and stupider our children are getting stupider and stupider and what i can't figure out is how is that possible when the technology keeps rising it's like the more technology we get the dumber we get you follow what i'm saying it's like the dumber we get because all you're doing is getting technically advanced but common sense is going out the window 
is going out the window. Right? It, it, it's, it's gone. Like, you know, it, it, it's out there. Like, I, I don't know where it is. It's gone. I'm trying to help y'all get it back. Right? But you already read that. It said it's a sign. Let's go to Exodus chapter four. Now let's see a little different here. He called the moon a sign. The sun and the moon and the stars in themselves, they're signs, but signs of what? Signs of time measurement. This is how we measure time. They give light. All we want to do is fear mongers. Got you walking around here scared of your own shadow. I feel sorry for you sisters because y'all marrying these weaklings. Yeah, that's that's who that's who we raised for y'all. How this man gonna protect you and he's scared of an eclipse? When was the last time the eclipse ever hurt anybody? I'll wait. Y'all tell me. When was the last time? I mean, you know, outside of you being too stupid to look directly at it, that is. When was the last time an eclipse ever hurt anybody? Your man is running around here scared of an eclipse and he's supposed to protect you? These are the punks we raising for y'all. You're welcome. That's what I'm saying, man. Bruh, you better get over that. I be trying to raise y'all to be men. Uh, Literally Dion's afraid of the dark. Who? Your Dion's trying to say something to you. Let me unmute him. Go ahead, um, G Dion. Still scared. Still scared. You know, you go into the room. Daddy, there's a monster under my bed. Your daddy looks under the bed. Get you down on the floor with him. See, baby, ain't nothing under the bed. You still think something under the bed. Grown men and women. You're literally, what happens when the eclipse comes, Gideon? What happens to the sky and to the light? What happens? What happens to the light of the sun when the eclipse happens? What happens? It gets dark, right? Right? Everybody agree with that? So you're literally afraid of the dark. <laughs> I just want you to know that. You're literally afraid of the dark. And the darkness don't even last that long. What, two to five minutes? And you you feel afraid. And this is going to be your man. These are the guys that we're raising for y'all, sisters. A bunch of guys, a bunch of grown men go to the gym and benching 250 pounds but scared of the dark. That's literally what you're telling me. I bet, boy, when that, when that eclipse came, some people sit up in their house like this, Jeff. Look at me. <laughs> Just scared. You know what I'm saying? Just get. Is it over yet? <laughs> Whew. Scared. Meanwhile, the rest of the world out there laughing, looking at it with the little shades on and all that. Chris is in the house scared. Right. Of something that always happens. And then y'all wonder why they mock us. We give them material. See, when I was growing up, we the Joan. Y'all know what Joan it is. Well, you know, you be making fun of each other. Right? Yes. But you don't give people material. See, when I was growing up, you wanted to try to have the best shoes, you know, you know, I didn't. The bad clothes, so they wouldn't have nothing to really say about you. Right? We giving people to join us about all stuff to join us about. We giving them material. It's bad. 
And y'all wonder why I don't want nothing to do with this Christianity? It is just, oh my God. I, I mean, I could talk all day about what's wrong with this, this so-called religion. If I could leave the planet to get away from it, I would. Because we don't mess it up so badly, y'all. It is so tainted, so bad that we got literal people literally afraid of an eclipse. And I learned about eclipses in the third grade. And they taught it to us in a wondrous sense. We had to go to the planetarium. Anyone of y'all ever been to the planetarium before? Yes, Give me sir. a dub in the chat you ever been to the planetarium. I know Jeff did. How the heck you go to a planetarium and you scared of an eclipse? They didn't teach y'all about the eclipses at the planetarium? We learned about them. That's elementary school. That's elementary school. You don't go to no planetarium in no middle and no high school. <laughs> you go to planetarium, planetariums in second, third, fourth grade. And you go like sometimes more than once um, um, during your time in elementary school. You might go in the third, fourth, and fifth grade. We went two or three times. They teach you all that at the planetarium. And I know if you're my age or older, you definitely went if you was here in America. But you're my age and you're scared of an eclipse. I, I, we learned about eclipse in science when I was little. It never scared me. They told us it's when the moon orbits in front of the sun and it's the blocking off of the sun. That's what that is. You're literally afraid of some of something blocking the light of the sun. They got you freaked out. So if I come over your house, Jeff, and you and you read it and you got your little study lamp on, and I stand in front of it and block your light, are you gonna freak out, Jeff? No, sir. I'm gonna tell you to move. You know, bro, could you move a little bit? I'm trying to read, Josh. That's what Chris Chris just literally got afraid because somebody stood in front of the sun. Did you know that you see eclipses every day, Jeff? Did you know that? Did, uh, did, did y'all know that? Did you know that every time you walk into the shade in the sun, that's the tree eclipsing the sun's light? Did y'all know that? That's literally what's happening. Every time you, you put something in front of the sun that blocks the light from coming. If you wear a sun hat, that's an eclipse. Your hat is eclipsing the light from the sun. Y'all also ever go to the beach and you put on a sun hat? Y'all ever done that before? <laughs> That's literally something eclipsing the light of the sun. Eclipse has nothing to do with sun or moon. Eclipse just simply means to overshadow something. Like if I were to say, Gideon's popularity eclipsed another YouTuber's popularity. I mean, it overshadowed it. You see eclipses every day. Somebody cutting your hair at your house. One of your friends walk by. The boy be like, hey, man, you blocking my light, man. I can't see what I'm doing. You just eclipsed this light. But if the moon does it. <laughs> <laughs> These people are crazy, y'all. And they'll drive you crazy. And that's what crazy does. Crazy drives crazy. That's what it does. That's why you got to stay away from crazy people. Y'all be wanting me to entertain him. Talk to him, Josh Boy, so I can catch what he got. So y'all want him to drive me crazy now. No, I love my sanity. It's the only thing I really got. I lose that. I'm no good to nobody. Y'all know that, right? Once your mind go, you're no good to anybody. Y'all know that, right? So don't play with it. You know what I'm saying? Don't play with it. Right? But we're in Exodus 4. We're reading about Moses. Exodus 4, 14 to 17. Real simple stuff. <clears throat> Scared of an oh, eclipse. Yeah. Man, get out of here, man. You hurt my feelings. You called me stupid. What about all the people who you caused to have anxiety and panic attacks? Yes, there were people that were getting real panic attacks from this stuff. Y'all know that, right? This is real stuff. People getting panic attacks. Y'all know that, right? Look it up. People getting anxiety. When you when you do stuff like this, you're inciting a panic. So you both do, you want you want sympathy because I called you stupid, but you're literally causing mass panic among the masses. 
Which one is worse? See, if I call you stupid enough, maybe you'll stop doing it. See, every time somebody got to be harsh, y'all want to go after the person that's being harsh. You know what else is harsh? The electric chair. You know what else is harsh? Lethal injection. But I bet you wouldn't object to it if the person sitting in the electric chair just murdered your children and your mother. You wouldn't object to it then. You wouldn't be like, well, that's a little harsh. No, you're going to be like, I pulled the switch. See, everybody want to talk about how harsh something is until it affects them. Right? I don't believe in the death penalty until that guy kills somebody in your family. You follow what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't come at me with them feeling stuff. I don't care about feelings. When they get in the way of facts, keep your feelings to yourself. If you try to put your feelings before my facts, I'm going to hurt your feelings with my facts. That's what I'm going to do. Get out of your feelings. Get up in here. Start thinking. Y'all understand? Start thinking. Start doing research. I'm not telling you to, to, to be heartless. I'm not telling y'all to be that. Y'all feel me? Don't be heartless. I want y'all to have, you know, compassion and stuff on people. I'm not a heartless person. Everybody who know me, they know Josh cares. Josh has a big heart. I care a lot. I, I care more than y'all probably can ever imagine. In fact, I care so much that I'm willing to hurt your feelings to save you. So y'all think y'all do people favors by not hurting their feelings. Mm -hmm. No, you don't care about somebody. If you spare somebody feelings, you don't care about their feelings. You don't care about what's good for them. Same thing with your kids. You follow what I'm saying? I know y'all love your kids. But if your child told you, I want to only eat candy all the time, no veggies, no meat, nothing. I just want to eat candy all the time. And then they start crying. Yeah, you probably feel bad that they're crying, right? Mm -hmm. Or do you care more about how they feel or do you care more about what's best for them? You're not going to let them just ruin themselves with junk food. You're not going to do that. And you're going to hurt their feelings by telling them, no, you can't have that. That's not good for you. That's what's going to happen. But we don't got worse than the kids. Because you can sit down and explain to an eight-year-old that it's not good for you to eat candy all the time, sweetie. You to rot your teeth out. Um, it's not good for your health. You'll gain weight. The eight-year-old at first, but they're like, you know what, mommy's right. I get it. Grown men and women, though, you just raise your voice a little bit. Be a little, just a, a little bit, they like to call it aggressive. I like to call it urgency. See, when I went, when I worked at the hospital, they had something called urgent care. Y'all know what urgent mean, right? What do urgent mean, Jeff? Uh, that would be um, something that needs uh, priority. Like Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Urgency. So you call it aggressiveness. I call it urgency. See, I'm I'm coming at y'all like what I'm telling y'all is urgent. I'm showing a sense of urgency. That's what it's called. Show a sense of urgency. You follow what I'm saying? When was the last time you saw an ambulance, <laughs> an ambulance pick up somebody who just got shot, and the paramedics are all like, "Okay, what well, we're going to do here is we're going to just get them up on the gurney here, huh? and we're going to just get them on." No, they're like, "I worked in the ER, right? It was turned up. You know, people were calm, but they were urgent. See, people think if you're urgent, that means you're not calm. It's calm. Calm just means you're in control." Of your emotions. That's all calm mean, y'all. Calm does not mean, I see people tell you to calm down just because you get loud. Hey, bro, calm down, dude. I am calm. Right. Remember, calm just means you're in control. That's all calm mean. Calm is a state of mind. It has nothing to do with volume. You follow what I'm saying? You know how I know that? Because I don't see people calmly whoop somebody A. <laughs> <laughs> they calmly did it. But they, they, they went all turned up. It's a state of mind, y'all. It ain't got nothing to do. It ain't got nothing to do with voice, volume, or anything like that. It's a state of mind, y'all. But they're a little to tell you, you need to calm down, bro. Why? Dude, I'm calm. I'm in control. 
When somebody's really not calm, they're not in control. They can't think straight. They're hysterical. Y'all think calm just means this all the time. This form of calm, you know, like calm waters, you know, the waters ain't crashing all around. Mm -hmm. But calm don't always mean that. Calm just means in control. Right? And I've never seen an ER tech that was calm in the sense of chilling. They were always urgent and turned up, but they were in control. Remember that, y'all. Don't let nobody try to trick you into thinking just because you're turning it up. You're not calm. And they'll try to hit you with that. You, you need to calm down, dude. I'm calm. I'm in control. I'm thinking straight. Right? But this is Exodus 4. 14 to 17. Look what God is telling Moses. Go ahead and read. Exodus chapter 4, verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know mm -hmm. that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be mm -hmm. with thy mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what ye shall do. Mm -hmm. He shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. So and Moses was going to be like functioning as God, and Aaron was going to be functioning as like a prophet of God. This is what this is saying. But watch what he says in this next verse. Go ahead. Verse 17. And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. He says, and thou shalt take this rod in your hand, wherewith you shall do signs. Same Hebrew word there that appears in Genesis 1. But what signs is he talking about right here, Jeff? This would be the supernatural. The supernatural ones. Do y'all see this? He said, you're going to do signs. That means it's going to be something supernatural, something miraculous, like a wonder. Something that makes people say, oh, my goodness, this don't happen every day. What's going on here? I've never seen anything like this. This is out of the ordinary. And if you know the Exodus story, you know all the stuff that Moses were doing, all the signs that him and Aaron were doing. Do y'all see the difference? Do y'all see there's a normal sign, right? That's a normal sign versus a supernatural sign. Do y'all see the difference yet? Jeff, you got it? Kevin J? Yes, sir. Clubhouse, people in the chat on Discord? Do y'all see the difference? Normal sign, supernatural sign. These are supernatural signs that he was about to do. He was not about to go to Pharaoh and say, guess what, Pharaoh? The sun's going to rise tomorrow. Pharaoh would have been like, and? He was not about to go to Pharaoh and be like, guess what, Pharaoh? At nightfall, the stars are going to shine. Pharaoh would have been like, and? So you know he wasn't talking about that. That's why this class is titled, not everything is a sign from God, meaning a supernatural sign. Y'all take normal stuff and y'all make it supernatural. That is retarded. That's what that is. We got to stop this. And then y'all want to come and challenge me because I'm just saying, yo, this ain't talking about that. This is the truth. We don't do stuff like that, y'all. Now that we see that, now let's go to Joshua chapter 10. Let's look at this. Let's look at a sign involving the sun and the moon. And y'all tell me. See, once we do this, y'all gonna be able to tell me. I ain't gonna have to um, tell y'all which is which. You're gonna know. Let's go to Joshua 10. Y'all know the story, but we're gonna read it anyway. 12 to 14. He said, yo, Josh, use a different word for that. The world is used to insult disabled people. That's not how uh -huh. I'm using it. That's not how I'm using it. Look up the word retard. 
Look it up. Got you. Pull that up for me right quick. Pull it up for me. Um, I got here's another teaching moment. Y'all ever heard of something called fire oh, retardant? Anybody ever heard that word before? Yes, sir. If you're an electrician, you have to wear that. Mm -hmm. There you go. The delay or hold back in terms of progress. We froze again. Or just me. Oh, okay. I thought it was just me. Uh, no. No, I can't hear him. He's still frozen. Oh, I guess it is us two. Yo, um, Discord, I mean, uh, YouTube, I'm going to have to end the stream. I apologize about that, man. Um, I'm not sure what's going on on my end. Uh, click the link down in the description below. Join into the Discord so you don't uh, miss any more of it. But, yeah, I'm sorry about that, y'all. I'm going to have to end the stream and restart my whole PC. All right, peace.